This is a true story. On the evening of Christmas Eve in 1971, we follow the harrowing journey of 17-year-old Julianne Kupfka, who had recently completed her high school education in Lima. Excitement was in the air, as she anticipated celebrating Christmas with her parents at their remote ecological research station in the heart of the Peruvian jungle. The airport in Lima was buzzing with holiday travelers, everyone scrambling to get a spot on Lanza Airlines' last operable airplane. Despite her father's grave reservations about Lanza's notorious safety record, where prior fleet incidents ranged from catastrophic crashes to critical technical failures, Julian and her mother managed to secure the final two seats on the ill-fated Flight 508. Hours into the flight, the weather turned for the worse. The clouds became thicker. Extreme turbulence, unlike she had ever experienced before, shook everyone in their seats. Suddenly, a bright white flash lit up the cabin with a loud bang. Lightning had struck the airplane. The airplane violently started to shake as Julian's mother, who was sitting next to her, yelled out that this was the end. The airplane had disintegrated in midair, separating Julian's row of seats from the frame. They were spinning and free-falling towards the earth from a staggering 3,000 meters high. And then, nothing. The evening passed, and the night went by. Confused and in pain, Julianne gradually regained consciousness and found herself lying on the ground near the base of their seats. The man who was sitting next to her was gone. But even worse, so was her mother. Worried about her, Julianne began to crawl across the jungle floor, calling out for her but her cries remained unanswered. Four days later, she made a grisly discovery. Another row of seats that had torn away from the airplane was embedded three feet into the ground, with the female passengers still buckled in. They appeared to have died on impact. Desperate to find her mother, she decided to investigate if she was among the deceased. Using a stick, she pried off one woman's shoes when she noticed she had painted her toenails something her mother never did. Julianne felt a heavy realization settle in. Her mother wasn't there among the wreckage, possibly gone forever. That's when the sound of a nearby stream, previously unnoticed in her shock, drew her attention. Hungry, hurt, with a deep cut on her leg and shoulder, a swollen shut left eye, a broken collarbone and a concussion, Julianne knew her best shot at survival was to follow the creek to a larger river, and hopefully, to civilization. And so, after grabbing a bag of candy that she found near the deceased passengers, and still dressed in just the miniskirt she wore on the day she crashed, she set off into the jungle. As she navigated the wilderness, planes frequently flew overhead, searching for the wreckage. But the distant sound of airplanes dwindled and eventually stopped, marking the end of the search. Julianne was now entirely on her own, forced to rely solely on herself in order to reach civilization. She spent another six days walking through the jungle. Some nights she tried to sleep in the ice-cold rain, others she was plagued by thousands of mosquitoes who were eating her alive. During the day, she waded through crocodile-infested waters with her skirt ripped to shreds. Maggots, half an inch long, burrowed into the festering wound on her shoulder, feasting on her flesh. On the eleventh day, running on fumes of her waning energy, Julianne finally reached a larger river. She collapsed on its bank, where she sat for hours, gazing at the flowing water. It was then that she noticed a boat moored at the water's edge. It had been there all along. The boat, as fate would have it, was part of a small logging camp situated on the riverbank. With the little strength she had left, Julianne dragged herself towards a thatched hut. To her dismay, the camp was abandoned and she was left with no choice but to spend another lonely night at the camp, hoping to gather some strength. The next day, in a turn of events, three loggers arrived at the camp. They found Julianne and promptly tended to her injuries, pouring gasoline into the maggot-infested wound on her shoulder. After an 11-hour boat ride, they finally arrived at the closest village from where she was airlifted to a missionary hospital. Julianne eventually made a full recovery. Unfortunately, her mother was found to be among the deceased. Upon investigation, it turned out that 14 other passengers had survived the initial crash, but died 
waiting for help. If you liked this video, it would be of a tremendous help if you could hit that like button. But above all, I hope you enjoyed. Since these images were AI generated, what errors did you notice? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe.